What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. I have a fun video today showing you how to calculate percent change, but specifically this percent change calculation will work for each level of your date hierarchy. We're currently looking at the month level of my date hierarchy. As you can see on the right side, I have date, year, quarter, month, day. So we're looking at the month level and my total sales is this blue line here and the bars are indicating whether or not it increased or decreased from the previous period. For example, if we're looking at this point right here, we see that it decreases to the next month, and that's why we have a red negative percent change bar. Now let's drill down into this month by clicking on that bar, and we will see that we'll show each of those individual percent change calculations for each day. For example, we have a large increase from this day to the next, and therefore we have a large green bar showing a percent change of 103.14%. So just to drill up and show you the entire hierarchy, from the year level. Here we can see the percent change on the yearly scale, so from one year to the next. If we drill down, we can see it on the quarterly scale, monthly scale, and then finally that daily scale. So each individual day, we're gonna see the percent increase between those two days. So what DAX do you need in order to set this up? Let's go ahead and take a look at the final version of the measure, and then we'll walk through this individually. Basically, we just need to have a current value, which is just my measure that's being shown in this visual, and a previous value. I'm using the switch function in order to check the scope of my visual, basically which level of the hierarchy that I am currently looking at, and then I calculate that previous value with this date add function. And then finally, I divide my current value minus my previous value divided by previous value. So if you're just looking for the answer to the solution, here it is right here. I will give you a quick note that I'm using the date add function when I'm on the day level, but the parallel period when I'm on any other level of the hierarchy. Briefly, that's because you can't use parallel period on the day level. So realistically, you can use date add for all uh, four levels of your hierarchy. So we could change that to date add instead of parallel period, and then change it to the month level and I will do that as well for the other two for a quarter and finally the year level. I just wanted to show you that you could do both, uh, but in order to do that day level, you need to have day dad. So with that, let's go ahead and build this from scratch. I'm going to create a second measure here. That is uh, percent change. I'm just going to call it percent change two. And I want to create a variable called current value and that is just going to be my total sales value and that's the measure that i'm showing in my visual it is the current value that we are currently looking at when we're performing this measure calculation then i need my previous value and i'm going to set that equal to a switch statement and if you're a long time watcher of my channel you'll know that i use a switch statement all the time it's a very nice way to evaluate for multiple conditions so I'm going to set that equal to true. So all of my conditions will evaluate for true. And then I need to use the is in scope function. This is going to tell us what level of the hierarchy that we are currently on. So if we say is in scope and along my X axis, I am using this date field and specifically it is a date hierarchy. It's a built in date hierarchy. You can use this for any date hierarchy that you create. I'm using the Power BI built in date hierarchy just because most users will probably be using that. So here's a big trick. You want to start with the innermost level of your hierarchy and work outwards. For example, I see that the last level of my hierarchy is day. So my first condition needs to be the day level. So if is in scope date date dot day do something. And the reason I'm starting with the inner level of my hierarchy is because if you start with the year level, even as you drill down, let's say to the day level, it's still going to think that year is in scope. It basically thinks that every level that you've drilled down through is in scope. So if we check the most inner level, it will allow us to know exactly what level we're on. So if our day level is in scope, we want to return a value of calculate total sales measure and use that nice date add function that we spoke about earlier. I want to pass in my date date and I want to use negative one as my number of intervals and my interval is day and that's all I need. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this line and just copy it down a few more times and close off my switch. Oh, I missed a couple of parentheses. Let me go ahead and add those. Make sure we close off all of our parentheses. And now I'll close off my switch. So now let's replace day with month. And then we need to replace our interval with month and quarter with quarter. 
and finally that year level. Year. Perfect. And now once we've done that, we just need to return and a divide function. Current value minus previous value divided by previous value. That is the basic percent change formula. And I just want to spend a few more seconds talking through this previous value calculation here. So like I said before, it is very important that we start with the innermost level of our hierarchy, because if we're on the day level, we need to compare to the previous day. If we're on the year level, we need to compare to the previous year. And doing it in this order will allow us to know exactly which level of the hierarchy that we're on. So that's the entire measure. I'll go ahead and click enter and I will throw this in to our visualization instead of our other percent change measure. So percent change number two, and that's looking good already. I want to tell you about the conditional formatting that's set up under the data colors. I have it set up to where my percent change, if it's greater than zero, it's green. If it's less than zero, it is red. And right now it's actually looking at my other measure percent change, although they're the exact same, so it won't really affect anything here. But that's going to give us that dynamic percent change, and it's going to be colored nicely based on if it's positive or negative. So I hope you like this video. It was pretty in-depth on how you calculate this percent change measure, but I wanted to do it in a dynamic way that allows you to drill down over multiple levels of the hierarchy. If you don't necessarily have a date hierarchy set up, you can do this with any columns that you drag into your axis if you want to set up that impromptu hierarchy. If you want to practice along with the same sample data, you just need to enroll as a student in my BI Elite training courses over on my website, training.bielite.com. The link is always down in the description, and I will see you in the next video.